Hi, um, I'm going to deal with a new unit. This new unit is about reactions. And we're hoping to see a pattern within these reactions we're about to do. And chemistry is not a jumble of lots of different reactions. Chemistry is about looking at patterns of reaction, learning a pattern, and then whenever you get that situation, then you can apply that pattern and provided we teach you some something like nine general equations that will allow you to deal with all the reactions that are within the GCSE chemistry. So chemistry fundamentally involves lots of reactions and, and makes sense of the reactions one at a time and then the whole of chemistry will not be clouded and fuzzy and confused in your head. So a few little things I want to start with. Um, when we're doing reactions, the chemicals we start with are called reactants. So reactants are what we start with. And when we do the reaction, that reaction will make something new. That's what makes it a reaction. If nothing new is made, then there's no reaction. But if we make something new, the new chemicals, the new chemicals made are called products. So I've kind of written the summary here. Don't know if you can see that. Just flip it round. Sorry, it took me a bit of time to do that, but look. Reactions are where reactants change into products. The reactants are the starting materials and the products are the new materials. Now that, that make it an arrow, don't make it an equal sign, which uh, boys have a tendency to do. And today, we're going to look at how metals, we're going to look at how metals react with water. Um, let's show you some metals. I've got some water here. A trough of water. And I've got various metals. Um, I can react the metals with the water and see what happens. So the first one is copper. So we take some copper, got some copper here, copper. What did it say? Copper turnings. Teeny weeny pieces of copper. And I've got them there. And I can drop them in. And copper is one of those metals that does not react with water. Now, they're, they're just some bubbles of air that's trapped with the turnings when I put them in. But there you go. You could look at... The turnings, absolutely nothing. So there are metals that do not react with water, like copper. Copper does not react with water. That's why we use it for water pipes. Water pipes in your house are largely copper. Water runs through them. Water doesn't react with the copper. The copper will last your lifetime, my lifetime, our lifetime, many lifetimes, because it's not going to react away. It will stay there. Water will run through it happily for hundreds of years. So do all metals not react with water? Well, no, that would be wrong too. There are some metals that do react with water. And here I've got a metal called calcium, and calcium is a metal. I can just get a few little pieces out here, and I can drop them in here. Calcium is in group two of your periodic table. It's an element, like copper is an element. You can find that on your periodic table as well. Calcium is in group two, the second column. I'm going to drop that in to the water, and then we'll see what happens 
Tr tr try and ignore the copper turnings that are already in there. This is the calcium going in now. Right. Can you see how there is a reaction and the reaction is quite vigorous? That's because I put quite a lot of calcium into the trough. If I kind of just get a little bit of water, like that, and I get one, one piece of calcium, one piece of calcium, here, and can you see, if I hold it underneath, it gives off hydrogen gas. And I can collect the hydrogen gas, like that. That test tube there has got hydrogen gas within it. Now, you guys should know that the proof for hydrogen gas is to light it and see if it gives a squeaky pop. Let's try that. Squeaky pop. So, squeaky pop means that was hydrogen gas coming off. Hydrogen gas comes off. Calcium reacts vigorously. And then I've got this metal. Lithium. Now lithium reacts even more vigorously than calcium. We need to show you lithium, sodium and potassium. And I'm going to do that later. I'm going to, I need to clean out the trough and do that again. I'm going to do that later, but what do I want you to know? I want you to know, I want you to know that there are three eventualities, three outcomes that might happen when you put on metal with water. One, no reaction. Two, slow reaction. Three, fast reaction. So there's a whole spectrum. There are many metals, there's like 80 odd metals. Some react violently, some react explosively, some react vigorously, some react fast, some react slow, some react very, very slow. And very slow, very slow. And then there are some that don't react. Gold does not react with water. Copper does not react with water. I will give you some memory aids to try and help you remember which metals react with water and which ones don't. But let's have a look at the metals of group one elements. Now group one elements on your periodic table is the first column. First column, the three metals are lithium, sodium, potassium. They're the three I showed you. I'm gonna stop the video and then I'm going to do lithium sodium potassium and we're hoping that we can see a pattern we're hoping that this gas coming off hydrogen gas will come off and we'll be able to write an equation for the reaction and hoping then i can teach you something else about uh, reactions with water there's a pattern for you to learn okay i'm going to stop the video there to press it twice Yes, sir. Right. Hi, so I'm going to cover the reactions of group one metals with water. This starts the topic on reactions. And when we do reactions, we try to show it in the form of an equation. Now, on the left, we write the things we start with. On the left, they're the chemicals we start with, they're called reactants. And on the right, um, they're the chemicals we end up with, they're called products, and this arrow, big arrow, separates the two, and that's, that big arrow represents a reaction. Now, some boys try to put equals there. Please don't put an equals there. Proper arrow represents a reaction, straight arrow. So, the example I'm going to start with is 
what if we had lithium, uh, that's lithium, what if we had lithium metal and I'm going to react lithium metal with water. Now I've got a trough of water which I'll show you in a minute but I want you to see that this lithium metal has got in it some oil. So the, that's oil, the lithium metal is in oil because lithium is so very reactive that it would, if it was in a bottle of air, it would react with the air. If we put it under oil, then the oil kind of stops it reacting with the air. So lithium is kept in oil. Um, if I take one little piece of lithium, that, that is a little piece of lithium, and Mohammed, if you want to get on the, the end so you can follow me. This is a trough, and it, it, if you have a look, lithium metal fizzes in water. That fizzing, we've got to get a minor on. What is that fizzing? Well, in chemistry, fizzing is when we have a gas coming off. So, some kind of gas coming off. If I get a, te a test tube, fill it full of water and then hold this over the mouth of the test tube then I can collect the gas and I can try and collect it and see what is that gas that I've collected now I know what the gas is only because I know my chemistry um, but if I collect the gas and nearly got a test tube of it then I think that gas is hydrogen now you guys should know the test for hydrogen. The test for hydrogen is that it should give me a squeaky pop. When I light it. So I've got a Bunsen burner over there. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to not bother with the splint. I'm just going to try and light the gas using the Bunsen burner. And what I'm looking for is a squeaky pop to prove it's hydrogen. So I'm going to pull it out. squeaky pop that's proof that that gas is hydrogen so let's get back to this equation starting with lithium and water reaction we get what do we get well we get hydrogen gas hydrogen gas and we get something else but down here I'm using symbols and the symbol for hydrogen gas is H2G for gas. I'll come back to that, but there is something else we need to try and show. So, Mohammed, if you can get back, back on the camera. If I put more lithium... Ah, let me show you something before we start. I've got a beaker. If I get normal water, then normal water from a tap this is a universal indicator normal water from a tap is neutral see that it's green well I'm going to react I'm going to react this lithium I've got three little pieces I put all three pieces in get them to react and one the second chemical that's made that look they're all giving off hydrogen you can see them they're all fizzing they all float they all it's a it's a rapid reaction fast reaction the metal is reacting in a fast way with the water all giving off hydrogen but there there is a chemical that is being made we cannot see and I'm just going to stir that up that's the empty test you had earlier stir it up because I know that the chemical being made is an alkali. Now, if I get a clean beaker, I'll just clean that out. Clean beaker, take a little bit of that out. I know that the um, chemical being made is an alkali. Now, with universal indicator, alkalis go blue. So, put that in there, see? That is blue as opposed to the green that would be neutral. So because it's blue, I've got an alkali. Now, 
Lithium plus water makes hydrogen gas plus an alkali. Now the alkali, there are lots of different alkalis, but the particular alkali we get here is called lithium hydroxide. Lithium hydroxide. And that particular alkali will have the formula lithium hydroxide LiOH. And the lithium hydroxide is inside the water. So I need an AQ to tell AQ means it's inside water, dissolved in water. So learn AQ tells me that chemical is in water or dissolved in water. G means that chemical is gas. L means that chemical is liquid. S means that chemical is solid. These in brackets are called state symbols. And the state symbols are useful, makes you think what you started with, what you've ended up with, etc. Um, and it builds up this chemical equation, which is the language of chemistry, which you've fundamentally got to understand. And hopefully this year we'll develop it all with you. Um, so the reaction that happens is that one. Uh, there is one more thing I need to point out. If I've got chemicals that I start with on the left, and then chemicals I end up with on the right, then we have to balance the chemical equations. Whatever chemicals you start with, surely you've got to end up with those, and you don't get extra ones. So let me just explain that a little, but this will take practice over the next year or so. I hope you'll get good at this. So one lithium on, on the left, one lithium on the right, two hydrogens on the left, two and one makes three hydrogens on the right. So that's not balanced, that's, that's not good. One oxygen, one oxygen. So how can we get the hydrogens balanced? Well, I'm gonna use big numbers. Big numbers multiply these uh, symbols. So I'm gonna put uh, a two there, a big two there, and a big two there. And let's see now if that's balanced. Two lithiums, two lithiums. Two lots of water make four hydrogens. Two hydrogens there, and two lots of lithium hydroxide, two hydrogens here. Two and two make four hydrogens, now the hydrogen are balanced. Two oxygens out oh, there, two oxygens, now the oxygens are balanced. That, we, we use big numbers to balance equations, and if you can't balance an equation, then that equation won't be happening in the real world. All equations that happen are balanced in the real world because the chemicals don't disappear and the chemicals don't magically appear. Balancing is a high level skill, as I say, it will take you a bit of time, but start with the reactions we do uh, in, this, in this unit and slowly the balancing idea will come to you. So where on the periodic table is lithium? And it's in group one and it's at the top. If you look at your periodic table, group one, the first column, the very top, lithium. Now underneath that we've got sodium and underneath that we've got potassium and I want to do those next two but the reason we do this lithium sodium potassium is to show you the trend and the trend is one of increasing reactivity so I want you to in your mind's eye picture the lithium that you've seen I want you to think of that as a rapid reaction um, now the next reaction, sodium, I want you to compare whether this next reaction is faster or slower than the one that I've shown you with lithium. So, Mohammed, if you can get on the video again. Here we go. Um, this is uh, sodium. Can you see that sodium? And sodium, again, is kept in oil because it's very reactive. And in oil, it'll be less of a problem if I less of a problem reacting with air I mean if I take a little bit out I can dry the oil using a filter paper oh. 
and I've got the sodium on there. Now, the extra thing here is that the sodium will melt. So try and look for the sodium melting. Here we go. That sodium, it melts into a liquid sodium ball because the reaction gives out more energy. The energy of the reaction melts the sodium. It's giving off hydrogen gas, even though you can't see the bubbles, because the hydrogen gas coming off is, is being given off much faster than it was with the lithium. So this is a fundamentally more vigorous reaction. So I would use the word rapid with lithium, with sodium, I'm going to use the word vigorous reaction. It's more vigorous, more reactive than the lithium. And there's a good reason for that, which we will come on to later when we do future topics. You do need to know the lithium reacts with water and sodium reacts more vigorously with water than lithium does. And while you're there, Mohammed, let's do the, the third one. The third element down below sodium is this one, potassium. And potassium, I'm going to just get, get a little piece, stab a piece, pull it out, get my uh, filter paper just to dry it. Yeah, it's pretty dry. Got a little bit. I'm going to knock it in. Now, what you need to look out for here is this will catch fire. It's a lilac flame. So you, you are on, on exams, GCSE exams, asked about what you see and what you observe. This is a lilac flame. So look out for that. And the reaction is consequently even more vigorous than with sodium. So there is a trend in reactivity. The trend is one of increasing reactivity. Watch. Right. Okay. Did you get that, Mohammed? Got it. Now listen, boys. On, on period one or in period one, you've got lithium. Then you've got sodium. Then you've got potassium. Now, they're the three that I have done. In school, we don't have the next few. But lithium, sodium, potassium. The next two are rubidium and cesium. And those you can find on the internet. We in school don't have those samples, but they have got those samples on the internet. Can you go and have a look at those and they will react even more vigorously than these three that you've seen. So, I want you to be able to write equations and equations for those three reactions there that I've demonstrated to you. Are all of them going to follow this, this pattern? And I did say to you that groups are like families of elements and group one elements, they are like a family. They will all react in a similar way. And consequently, the reaction of lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, they all react in a similar way. But the trend, the trend is one of increasing reactivity. So this kind of thing will happen. The reactions will become more and more and more vigorous the further down that group that we go. Okay, so, stop it there and 